So since my last video on this was pretty popular and uh, one of my viewers actually asked me to make a kick drum using the Paizo uh, disc pickup here. And so uh, we're, today's video is gonna be about that. our kick drum so let's see how we make it the first step in this process is the same as in my last video about the hi-hat basically you connect this piezo disc um, the uh, black wire goes to ground which is this outside rim and if you tap on it it generates a voltage now if we take that voltage and put it through a diode right there this is a diode going in uh, from the output to the inverting input and you put a large resistor uh, one mega ohm resistor to ground at the uh, non-inverting input um, and you take the output from the um, downstream of the diode basically from the um, inverting input and this is our oscilloscope probe right here and if you tap on the disc you get um, a positive going spike. And so here it goes. And it's sensitive to the amount of pressure you put on it. So here, I'm gonna lower this down to one volt divisions, and here it goes. A very light touch gives you a little tiny spike, and a big touch gives you a big spike. And so uh, that's how that works. So now let's put that in action with the kick drum. So at the core of the kick drum uh, synthesizer circuit, you have this bridged T network. So the basis of the bridge T network um, is this. Basically, you have um, two capacitors in series right here i'm using 22 nanofarad capacitors um, and the outsides of them are bridged with a large resistor a one mega ohm resistor and then the other part of the bridge that the t part of it um, is a 1k resistor going to ground and all of that is in the negative feedback loop of an op amp so basically and it's supposed to generate a sine wave um, at the frequency determined by this resistor, these two capacitors, and that resistor right there. Now, if you put um, a positive feedback uh, into it, like with uh, this 47K resistor and a 1K uh, uh, resistor to ground, you get a stable sine wave that, you know, is at 19 volts peak to peak um, and it's a very steady sine wave at 220 hertz based on uh, this frequency or based on this set of uh, discrete components and so if you take away the positive feedback um, you don't have anything so now um, I have this bridge T network um, as uh, shown, and now I'm gonna take this and I'm going to momentarily put it to positive five volts, which is that rail right there. And that's what you get. As I, as I uh, let me zoom out a little bit so you can, everybody can see. And you get this decaying sinusoid that you can see right there. Um, and the shorter the burst of the trigger, uh, the better it is. And it's got its own little decayed pattern there. Um, there's a good picture of one. Here's where, like the, here's where the trigger kicked in, and there was a lot of bouncing in it. And then it kicks in, and it generates that sine wave at the predetermined frequency. In this case, it was 89 hertz, which is a good frequency for a low uh, frequency drum, such as a kick drum. 
and that's it. And then it, um, and then the uh, oscillation dies down. So now what we're going to do is we're going to incorporate that trigger with the piezo disc trigger that we created. So let's see what happens with that. So now we have the output of the piezo disc trigger um, going into the uh, non-inverting input of the op amp with the bridge T network on it. And the output is going through this little white wire into the output jack going to the speaker. So um, on this, I'm going to show you the oscilloscope and you can hear it at the same time what happens when I activate the trigger. And you can see it's a little bit of a higher frequency than we want for a kick drum. This sounds more like a bongo. So, um, how do we change that? We have to change one of the components in the Bridge T network. And so, uh, the easiest component to change is that 1K resistor down here at the bottom. And this 1K resistor, if we change it, we are going and make it um, a little bit larger. The frequency at which um, we're going to generate a the kick drum sound is going to lower and become more of a kick drum and less bongo-y. So let's try that. Now I replaced that uh, 1K resistor with a 47K resistor right here in the T part of the Bridge T network. And um, let's hear what it sounds like and let's see what it looks like. So let me back it up again and let's hear it. So now that sounds a lot more like a kick drum, doesn't it? And once again, it's force sensitive. So if I tap it lightly, and if I tap it um, hard, is so now let's see what we could do um, with this kick drum circuit uh, before we're done with it now this is the basically this is the exact way that the TR808 um, by Roland drum machine the classic drum machine from the 80s that a lot of great um, music was made on uh, designed their own um, kick drum circuit so this is literally right out of their book. So now let's see what other things we could do. Uh, since changing the resistance from 1K to 47K um, made such a drastic difference in the pitch of our, um, of our percussion sound, this begs for a potentiometer. So we could do on the fly changes for our various uh, kick drums. So let's try that. So now I've set it up with uh, this Bridge T network and this 100K potentiometer and the T that goes to ground. And so the way I have uh, this potentiometer set up is that um, the resistance decreases as I turn it clockwise and increases as I turn it counterclockwise. So um, by definition, as this is turned all the way clockwise, almost all the way clockwise right now, where the total resistance here is 100K. And um, if that's 100K, the frequency should be at the lowest. So let's see what that looks like and what it sounds like. So here it goes. Um, that's very low frequency. You can see how low that frequency is on the waveform. Now, if I turn this, now it's starting to increase. And now it sounds more like a TR-808 kick drum. And 
Now you could hear a little bit of a pitch to the drum. Okay, let's turn it even more. Let's see what happens. Now you get a hint of a bass note to it. Let's keep going. Now it's starting to sound less like a kick drum, more like a low tom drum. And let's see if we can go a little bit more. Mid tom drum. This is the same way you make a tom drum because you just need it to oscillate at a higher frequency and it's basically the same principle as a kick drum. So and now let's make it go back down to kick frequency. That's a good sounding kick drum. All right. So now let's see if we can make these kicks last a little bit and see how we could add some decay to this. And this is going to be straight out of the um, TR-808 handbook. So let's see if we can make this sound cooler. Now this looks a little bit much uh, more complicated, but this is basically the TR-808 decay uh, kick drum circuit and what this basically is is from the output of this first op amp i have a 47k resistor that's going to the inverting input of another op amp the non-inverting input is going to ground through that little green wire right there and um, there's another 47k resistor in the negative feedback loop uh, from going from the output to the inverting input. Um, then in parallel to that is a 100k resistor. Uh, the higher the value of this resistor, the more decay you get, because in parallel to this, it basically makes it seem like there's a, a gain of one on this op amp, negative one. And then all of that, the output of which is going through this large resistor of 470K, um, and that is feeding back to the T portion of the um, bridge T network, so where the two capacitors meet. And let's see and hear what that sounds like. Now, I haven't tuned the, the drum out at all um, from the previous circuit, so let's see what this looks and sounds like. Much more long lasting signal. And gives that drum a lot of body. It makes it sound gritty and industrial. And if I increase the frequency here, the pitch, it's going to make it sound more like a tom drum, especially with the resonance of the tom drum. Let's increase it a little bit more. It's starting to sound more like it. Now that sounds like a tom drum. If we go back up on this, let's make it sound more kickish. Now that has a lot more body to it. Sounds like a 
TR-808 kick drum. And it's force sensitive once again. So if I tap it lightly, Great. So that's basically our kick drum circuit with the piezo disc. And, and it looks a little bit complicated, but um, I'll include the schematic here. So, and that's the bare bones. There's more things you could add to it. This is a perfectly uh, usable kick drum circuit. The only thing that I would change, that I could change here, is have the ability to adjust the delay on the kick drum uh, by having a, a, a very large potentiometer here um, so that I could uh, go from a very short snappy kick drum to a long decaying one like this. So that's that. One last thing here. So now in the decay, instead of the 100K resistor, between the output and the inverting input in parallel to the 47K resistor, I have a 330K resistor, which is much larger, and that's supposed to increase the decay. So let's see what it looks like and sounds like. And from a truly um, synthesizer point of view, uh, it sounds pretty gritty. Thundering. So the last thing I did here was basically between this potentiometer and uh, ground, I put a 1K resistor in series so that I don't accidentally make it oscillate at a very high pitched frequency, um, which op amps are possibly can do. And this way it gives it a maximum uh, range. So if I, I have this resistance set to, to zero, basically turned all the way down to the counterclockwise, and this is the signal you get. And if I turn it up, you get into tom range, high tom, medium tom, that's a low tom. A little bit between is medium tom. And then when you swing it to a higher level, you get into kick range. <clears throat> and that's about 50 hertz. That's a good range. 50 to 90 hertz is a good range for a kick drum. And if you go even lower, you just get, get the kick click. I'd say that's a pretty functional piezo disc triggered force sensitive kick drum. So I'm gonna leave you guys with the schematic of this force sensitive uh, piezo disc triggered kick drum. Thanks for watching.